King Queen, okay, in the cutoff. This is gonna be an open. Um, could be a fold against the Rays, probably not. Could be a three bet as well against Oscar Brown. It's just gonna be an open from the cutoff. Certainly good enough to open here. And against the Rays, probably defend this one. Uh, especially if the raise comes from the small or the big because we'll have position and we're deep. Uh, J-N-C-O, Jew, Junko Jew, that's more problematic because he's in position. But again, in these spots, you can't just be folding king-queen. Fedor could squeeze here. And then we may four, we're going to four bet this some of the time. Not always. All right, now we have three queens. Let's just generate. Now we're going to bet small. As we would with a lot of our range, right? You can't just only bet when you have something bad and check when you have something, you know what I mean? Like, we're gonna bet sometimes, we're gonna check sometimes. This is gonna be a bet. So you should check this flop. Let's say, for example, you figure it out for yourself which one to. I'm not gonna give away my frequencies, but let's say you decided, all right, you know, you flop trips here, you're gonna check about 25% of the time. How do you do that? Well, you can randomize it. One bet. Uh, if Fedor gets frisky here, I'll be happy about it with the kicker. Hopefully he has like a queen nine, queen eight, something like that. All right, he's check raised. Let's see, very small percentage of the time we would re-raise. And I did, I did roll a re-raise. So I'm gonna do it. All right, he folded. Very small percentage of the time, uh, I'll do that. What do you call it? Uh, I'll re-raise the flop. It's very, very rare. Normally, you're just gonna be calling there. Very small percentage, and I rolled a very low number because the standard play is to call. But I think a three bet there is really funky, right? Especially if you're doing it with bluffs. You really put your opponent, and I, and I would be, right? So if we had like King Jack there, with a diamond or some shit like that, like that would be a pretty good spot to do it as well. Because here's the thing, right? When Fader, when we do call the raise, if we call the check raise, Fader knows it's probably not air for that size. So, and if he, he has a queen, he's not gonna fucking just fold three queens, right? So we'll just get it in, we'll get it in ahead, we'll build the pot. Um, and mo most importantly, when we, when we do check raise the flop, when he check raises the flop and we call, he knows we're probably not just calling with ace 10 ace jack so we either have a pocket pair a queen or a flush draw okay so now he can play against that range pretty comfortably with whatever he has and proceed from there so three betting that flop against him i kind of like it but again i like it as long as you're not just doing it with a good queen you have to do it with bluffs um and because we know he's you know he's an aggressive player he's going to check raise that pretty wide he doesn't have to have a queen so if we had, like I said, if we were bluffing the flop with king-jack, which is a really good kind of, it blocks king-queen and queen-jack, which are two, you know, decent blocker hands, then we would re-raise flop with king-jack there too. Jack-10 sometimes. Just say like jack-10. Let's say, what was it? The third card was a club. Let's say you had jack-10 of clubs. King-jack of clubs, something like that. Back doors. You can go ahead and re-raise flop. What is he going to do when you do that? You're, you really kind of cuffs your opponent, so it's actually not that bad a play. The problem with it is this, is if you do it too often with strong hands, uh, you fuck up your, uh, your calling range, right? So if you always re-raise with a queen there, when you don't, <laughs> your opponent can just bomb turn. All right, this is going to be, we three bet this sometimes as well, and this is going to be one. Actually, no, it isn't. Never mind. <laughs> that number's higher than I thought. We're just going to flat. Coke can doing the GTO. <laughs> That's funny. Ding, 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 ding. Again, I'm not going to share my actual frequencies. That's way too much information to give my opponents in terms of how I'm balancing. But I will just say that I am mixing it. So, all right, let's see here. Do I have a... I think I have a fold, fuck. Yeah. Well, we went from possible three bet to possible flat to just fucking fold. 
We were we were three betting. No, we were three betting when I first looked at the number. Then we're like, no, actually it's too high. We're flat. And then no, it's not a four bet because sometimes I'm gonna four bet there too. Wow, fucking we we we, we avoided the, the disaster. It looks like ah, Jay Anderson fucking around. Well, we might squeeze. Let's see. Oh no, fuck! This is crazy. What is Oscar Brown doing? What is Oscar Brown doing? Not three bet once yet, huh? All right, buddy. <laughs> fucking under the gun raise, flat from middle. These are some strong fucking ranges, and then we get a squeeze from the button. And we have the problem: we don't close the action. We got two players behind us, and we've got ace fucking queen, right? All right, swing and a whiff. It's gonna be an open. Eight or that's flop. All right, raise. Call. Oh, he led. Hmm. Okay. Little donk action. On a favorable flop. All right. Well, this is interesting. This is going to be a fold as well. He's gotten short. He's only got 32 bigs. So it's not deep stacked anymore. Oh, his hand doesn't play all that well. We're going to lay this one down. And we missed. Nice hand, Jinko Jew. King 10 off. Ooh, the hand everybody wants me to go all in with. I'll tell you what, if it is folded to me, I will go ahead and open. We're going to open smaller now because we've got a, a stack on 35. So we're going to open to 2.4. Small adjustment. My opening sizes are going to be based on my stack. But essentially the effective stack, right? So the effective stack means it's the effective stack is 35 bigs. All right, so here we go. We've got we've got a hand. We've got a hand where we have an open and straight draw. I'm gonna go with 40%. This might be one we plow. Depending. Come on. <laughs> ha ha. All right, we're gonna defend against that. All right, that's a decent flaw. Let's see, we're gonna lead here a very small percent. We're not leading this one. It's going to be a check and call. It's nice to have the club. Nice to have the club. It allows for some extra shenanigans, if need be. All right, just said uh, again, sorry to those in the chat. I'm not engaging too much with the chat today, so keep that in mind. We got a C bet here from under the gun razor. We have, let's see, do we want to ever check raise here? Sometimes, but not now. I'm just gonna flat. There's a club, okay. We may bomb this river if it goes check, check on turn. And we may call a bet. If he bets less than half pot, we will call. Five, 10 or a club could be good. He could have a club himself, which is, could be a problem. But uh, there is gonna be, if, it check, if he checks that turn, He's opening the door for me to really just bomb. Oh, not that fucking card. Maybe that card. I think we can check raise that card. Yeah, let's check raise. If he bets, fuck him. If he tries to value bet thin with like an ace, I'll stick it in his face. So, like, if you bet ace queen, ace jack, which is reasonable because, all right, there's 13 and a half. Yeah. All right, we're going to rip it.
Gotta bluff sometimes, people. We're doing it. Yeah, fuck yeah. Hmm. Suck it. Suck it, people. Yeah, I know what I'm doing, fuckers. I thought he hit that ace, so we're just gonna go. Instead of leading the ace, where he's just gonna call. If we bet the river, he's just gonna fucking call. But we check, we make him make a thin fucking value bet. We have the seven of clubs blocker. We have the bottom of range. Fucking yeah, stick it in his face. Yeah, the fucking motherfuckers. All right, we're just gonna flat this jack nine of clubs. Yeah, d -Nags knows what he's doing, y'all. And if he snap called, you guys would have said punt. What a dummy, what a stupid punt. All right, that's gonna be a check and a call. I could lead against Oscar Brown. He's been checking back in these spots a decent amount. But that's not gonna be a thing. Well, I rolled the check raise, so let's do it. I rolled the check raise. It's very rare we do this, but this is one of the spots where if he continues here, you can fucking bet your life he's probably gonna have an ace. We block ace nine, which is reasonable, and we have some backdoor stuff that could happen. Now with that turn card, the fact that he's called us, we're not gonna continue to fire. We are not going to continue to fire. Instead, I'm going to check, and we're going to wave the white flag if he bets. Not going to bluff this one. All right, he's betting half pot. I'm going to have to give him credit for an ace here. What is he What is he bluffing with? 7-8 suited, 6-7 suited type shit. It's really just not a lot of hands. All right. It's fine. <laughs> So again, I rolled the number. The number said check raise. It's a very, very rarely do we do that. A couple sixes, we will defend on the button. Mm -hmm. you know, I can't wait to see what you people saying about my, my, my jam. Oh, what a punt, so horrible, blah, blah, blah. Get a fucking clue, yo. <laughs> Get a clue, yo. All right, this is a good little spot. Deep enough, plenty deep to go ahead and set mine with the sixes, that's not our flop, <laughs> to say the least. Under the gun, under the gun, plus one range is very, very difficult to play. Um, wow. Yeah, I'm not gonna fuck with it. Nope. Yeah, I'm out. So here we'd have to hope that they have like sevens, nines, and, and you know. Okay. Not gonna fuck with it, as I said. What, six on the river? Nope, seven. Do you like that little seven, eight bluff, right? Because it's incredible, right? Check call the flop, right? Check, check the club turn. Check when I know he's gonna bet the ace. Jam, right? That's a very, very, like, flushy line. Now, Theoretically, the hand that I had, the combo, was very, very good for that because I had a club. If I don't have a club, but again, yeah, but if I don't have a club, there's more combinations of flushes that he could have, right? If there's 45 possible combinations of flushes. Um, when you have one of the clubs, it knocks out nine. Now, you have to consider the fact that he doesn't have all 45 because he's not going to have jack deuce of clubs, king deuce of clubs. He may have, you know, ace seven of clubs. Because I like to play long term. That's the thing. Sometimes that play, I'm just going to get fucked. It doesn't make it a, any less of a good play. All right, we're opening for 2.4 here. King 10 suited. Yeah. Sometimes, like, you get caught and people are like, oh, what a dumb play. But it's still a good play. Sometimes it just doesn't work. <laughs> you know, like, sometimes the guy has it or sometimes they call it's okay you have to bluff sometimes in micro stakes d -Nags bluff will get snap called that's why i wouldn't do it in a micro stakes game <laughs> right you get a play to your opponents okay so we got the king i'm gonna check this king one time checking this flop to jenko who's got 31 Bigs, he's gonna bet this flop a decent amount, I would think. 
All right, there's a small bet from Jimco. Let's see, do I don't want to do anything here? I'm going to flat, take a flop, slow play. There's another king. So this is going to be a check again. This is not a, it's a good, great card, obviously, right? But it's like, it's hard for him to fucking bomb bomb. So it's going to be difficult for us to get all his chips here. And again, he might have this beat. He could have king, queen, or king, jack, pocket jacks, pocket fives. And if he does, that's just life. That's just the cooler, right? Probably doesn't have ace king. He could have like a club draw. Oh, fuck. I say club draw and then look what comes. So interestingly enough, right? What is he going to call with that's worse? Not a whole fucking lot, right? So we might, we're just always going to check this now, right? Even though we got three kings, you got to think like, what does the calling range look like for Jin, Jinko Ju? Maybe a jack, sure. Question is, will he bet at it, bluff at it, value bet worse, like value bet a jack? I don't think he bets a jack here. But there's certainly plenty of bluffs. Oh, fuck, against big, that's a problem. We do block queen, ten of diamonds, right? Because we have the ten of diamonds. I don't think I can fold. We're just too high up in our range as played. I mean, yeah, I just can't fold this. <laughs> See? <laughs> but we maxed out the hand, right? We maxed out the hand. So by uh, playing it the way we did, checking the river, right? He wasn't going to call with ace fucking seven. He wasn't calling us. But he might bluff, so we got to let him bluff. And he did. It's a reasonable card for him to bluff. Right? It's a reasonable card for him to bluff at in that position. He took a stab at the flop. I just checked called. I didn't put any aggression in. So we are sitting pretty now. 26 of 119. Average is 78. What is our stack actually at? 140 from 100. <laughs> so we're happy. Ace deuce. I'm gonna fold that one. Off suited. Off suited. Off suited. I like how we're playing. I feel really good. Really crushing so far, I think. You know, we're just focused, like I said, on trying to play as unexploitably as possible. The 7 8, that's a little bit of Dean eggs, right? Like, I think the solver probably bets the river, maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure. But once check two. So if you check raise the river, right? So here's another thing I was talking about earlier. Or I was gonna do a video about. But like well, you gotta figure you gotta find bluffs, right? In each spot. Because if you, you make a bet and your opponent knows, all right, well, there's no hand that he would have that would bluff here. Then they just fold, right? So it's important when there's spots where you're gonna be nutted that you figure out, well, what hands would you bluff here? So in that spot, when it comes like the nine six three board and the deuce and the ace, if I check the river and he bets, like I have to have some bluffs. What's, the, what's a good bluff to have? That's a pretty fucking good one, right? So I'm going to check raise there with the flush, as I had. Maybe, probably just a flush, actually. But that's enough value combos. Yeah, I don't think I would even check raise jam with aces up. No, I don't think I would. Maybe a straight, four, five. Maybe I would, actually. Yeah, I would, never mind. All right, let's do 2.4, since that's what we did. Ace king, we would get it in with this one. At this stack depth, 80, even though Chris Rudolph has his out chip, we would be happy to get in. If Soyan raises here, we're just going to get it in. Oh, no, he just flat it. Okay, so if there's a squeeze, we will get it in. If Arnaud squeezes, which could happen, Arnaud, Ensemble, has not 3-bet much, playing pretty snug, but we have ace fucking king. You know? Yeah, he might do it. He's thinking about it. Do, 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 do. All right, he did it. All right, good luck to him. Good luck. There's the king. We need to see no jack. All right. We are 90% here. <laughs> Ship it. Hello. What are you going to do? Pick up ace king, he picks up ace queen. Press the call button, and we held. Wow. All right, we have 200K, y'all. 200K in chips. We're sitting 11 in 11 out of 115 right now. Queen Jack. We're going to come for 
once in a blue moon we, we check this back. This is going to be one of those times. And then we're going to bomb turn in river probably. Yeah, we're going to bomb this turn. Three point. We're going to bet half pot on the turn. If he bets, I'm going to call and then bluff river. So if he leads the turn, I'm going to call with the full intention of him checking river and then me bombing the motherfucker. All right, so he's betting half pot. As I said, calling to bluff river. All right, now we can do it for sure. Now we can do it big. Because listen, there's only one ace he could have, right? He could have a 10. Probably not. There's a spot. We're just going to bet the pot. He calls with a 10, though. I think he just always calls with a 10. That's all right. And Queen Jack could be the best hand, too. As played, we just don't fucking have a lot of bluffs, right? Check, check, flop, fucking call turn. I mean, he has a 10, I think. And he's thinking about calling with a 10. If he calls, he calls. Again, it's fine. We have a fucking plan. We stick with the plan. And if it works, great. <laughs> don't you love it when a plan comes together, y'all? Fucking running hot. Put running hot on there. Don't you love it, y'all, when a fucking plan comes together? Like, what would you do if you have a 10 there? Right? You can't beat an ace. You can't beat kings. You can't beat jacks. You can't beat queens. I could have all those fucking hands. You can't. You have a 10. That's the best hand you could have, right? But, or you know, you could have an ace, I guess. But. Solid. Lots and lots of good bluffs getting through. All right, I'll answer a question from Luke Sivlinski about the suited combos and having the seven of clubs, changing your opponent's combinations of suited cards, right? Okay, when three clubs hit the when there's three clubs on board, your opponent could have a possible, there's one, like any of, let's say he played any, every suited hand, right? That were clubs. There's 45 possible combinations. Ace, deuce, ace, three, ace, four. King, deuce, king, three, king, four. Like all the possible combinations of flushes, right? When you have one club in your hand, right? If I have the deuce of clubs, well, he can't have ace, deuce, king, deuce, queen, deuce, jack, deuce, 10 deuce, 9 deuce, 8 deuce, 7 deuce, 6 deuce, 5 deuce, 4 deuce, 3 deuce, right? So there's, it cuts you down by 9 because there's 3 clubs on board. So now, instead of 45 possibilities, there's only 36. Again, that spot, it wasn't quite as relevant because he doesn't play every 7 of clubs. He's not, he doesn't have 7 deuce of clubs. We don't block the 7 deuce of clubs, right? Because he never has that. We block a 7 of clubs, 7, 8 of clubs, 6, 7 of clubs, shit like that. We got a fireball on us. We got 37% played. We're playing every pot. We're playing, well, we're playing more pots than everybody else, as you can see. Michael Meyer says he played a 10-6 suited, but won't play king-9 suited. What do you think was different about those two hands? Right? One, I was in the cutoff next to the button. The other, I was under the gun. Okay? So, maybe a little lesson for you. Okay? Early position. You got to play a tighter range. Later position, you widen your range. I wouldn't play 10-6 suited if I was under the gun. I'd play it late. I wouldn't play king-9 king suited under the gun. I would have played it late. Okay? There you go. Free lessons.